Mexico, but it's a it's an amazing story. I love I love what he said when he was on that ship, <coughs> and he said he made his marriage contract with God, and it was at that time that he took out the reverse gear in his Christian walk. I I love that. I, I wish every Christian could understand that and take out the reverse gear. I by the way I. I've told this before, but I drove a car for a year one time without a reverse gear. It was quite a creative time trying to find out where to park. (laughs) Um, But the the other thing that I, well, first of all, I I wanted to finish something I started earlier. In, uh, I had told about starting to read his newsletter and beginning to appreciate his newsletter. And then in 2016, I think it was, uh, we were at uh, a Waiting on God meeting at, at Parker City. And, and Reverend Schulte was there, and there was a lot of people there, and I had just really had a desire to get to spend some time with him, but there's a lot of people there, and people like to be around him. He's a fascinating guy, and so I just prayed, and I asked, Lord, if you want me to be with him, I, I just had a desire that we could go have a meal with him, and I think it was on sa- Saturday um, after the service, and uh, I didn't see him anywhere. He wasn't around. And so I just felt that I was to just hang back. People, for a long time, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, people were leaving the sanctuary. And I just hang, hung back, hanging around the sanctuary. And then finally, uh, when almost everybody was gone, and I walked out, and as I walked out, Reverend Schultz walked out of another room. Uh, he was, uh, you know, elderly and he was they gave him a room to to take a nap in and that's what he was doing and he came out and it was just me standing there with him and and I just told him how much I appreciated him and and uh, that I was really glad to get to see him and uh, he said you want to go to lunch (laughs) and he had actually told me he said he gets away sometime because people are always wanting to take him out to eat. And, but he was the one that brought it up. So we actually went to uh, eat at a cafeteria. Uh, there's a certain age people that they like cafeterias, and that, that was fine, that was wonderful. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and uh, so we had the cafeteria, and we were treated to a lot of what you heard. Uh, just I, I wish that I had been able to record it or something, but it was just a treasure. Um, And uh, Kathy got to spend some time visiting with Marsha, and it was just a treat. And then probably since then, maybe half a dozen times since then, I just had it on my heart to call him, and he was always gracious, and we would talk. And I just felt like every time that I would talk with him that it was just a treasure uh, to, to just to savor every word. And the last time was... I don't know, four, six weeks ago, and it was at that point that he said that, you know, they were stopping treatment. Last year, uh, when we went to Michigan, we stopped by their house, and we got to spend a couple of years. I'd never been to his place before. I'm sorry. We couple, we spent, a, I wish we had, we'd spent a couple of hours with them. Thank you, honey. Yeah, I wish, but, uh, he, I got to see his, his, he has a room fixed up above their barn, and that's his prayer room, and that's where he goes to pray, and that's where he, he writes and a lot of those things, and I just, I felt like I was in a, a holy place, and I was, uh, and it's not to build up a man, but it's to just be thankful for a life well lived, who always pointed to Christ, and um, I, I was thinking about his ministry and I, I thought, I've been reading through the book of John uh, slowly and, and prayerfully lately. And uh, so I just, to me, this really sums it up. Now, how many of you can, before we put it up, if we say, if I say John 3.16, you know what we're talking about, okay? Let's say that together, those of you that know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. A little bit different than the New American Standard, okay? Now, let's quote John 3, 36 together. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember it either. Okay, but we're going to put John 3, 36, 20 verses later. I want you to hear what this says. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So the Bible teaches that we must believe to have everlasting life. We must believe in the Son. Now that's not a casual uh just mental ascension that we believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. I, I heard an illustration yesterday, and it's very unusual one, but it kind of gets the point across. And if you, the African, let me let's just put it this way. Uh, think about if you're going to Africa and you're going to kill an animal, you know, a safari. Now, how would you normally do that? If you're an American and you're over there, you probably got a big gun, right? You're going to point it, you're going to shoot it, you're going to kill the animal, and, and whatever you do with it, all right? You're doing it from a distance. You're taking the life of this animal. I said this was an unusual illustration, okay? Just hang with me. However, if you're in Africa, uh, you don't think about an animal being killed that way just say, for instance, you're a cheetah and you want to take out a wildebeest. You don't do it from a distance. You go all out for it and you chase it down and you grab it and you take it, okay? That's kind of the difference in the way we think of belief and what God thinks of belief. It's not doing it from a distance, we got our game and we're walking off. It's going at it with everything that we have did you hear Reverend Schultze talk about he spent six months seeking God, reading the Bible, longing for something. He knew there was something out there. How many of you know that when you get something without much effort, you don't really treasure it that much? But when you go after it with everything you have and you finally get it, it means something to you, right? That's the difference in a, in a, in, you know, a kid or young person getting a, a car by his parents that he didn't have to work for it, it was just handed to it, and one who had to work for it. Now, I'm not saying we have to work for eternal life, don't misunderstand me, but there is a seeking involved in finding Jesus, and we sometimes short-circuit that understanding that we have to seek him with all of our heart to find him. And we, in American Christianity, try to make it so easy that the people that believe, and I'm kind of having to use that with quotation marks around it, they don't value what they have received. All right, praise God. It's, they, he mentioned Dietrich Bonhoeffer in there. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was the great uh, German theologian who fought Hitler, and, and it's an amazing story, but he talked about cheap grace. And today, I'm afraid, in the church today, we have cheap grace. We have God is so good, he just loves us all, and he's going to forgive us, you know. God is not a God of cheap grace. God sent his only son to purchase our eternal destiny. That is not cheap. And we cheapen grace when we make this, what I call, easy believism in the church. All you have to do is believe. Well, that, that is true, but what do we mean by belief? We mean trusting him with all of our hearts, seeking him, and we mean obeying him. Let's look at that again. Do you see this, John 3, 36? He who believes in the Son has eternal life. Okay, we got that. That was in John 3, 16, right? But he who does not obey the Son will not see life. Do you see that believing the Son and obeying the, God, the Son in God's mind is the same thing? But the wrath of God abides on him. We, don't, we love John 3.16, but we're not sure about John 3.36. 30, 
we have to obey the Son. That means that it's a lifelong commitment. When pa Reverend Schulte talked about being on that ship and the devil yelling at him and he says, I'm going to throw the reverse gear out. I'm making a marriage contract with God. It is, it is for better or for worse. And um, we have to obey the Son every day of our life. We have to seek him with all of our heart. But the great news is he doesn't, he makes himself available to us. We can walk with God every day of our life. It's not complicated. It may not be easy, but he makes himself available to us every day. And I know that I'm talking to a group of people that know this, but we have to seek him. And as a body, we have to seek him and we have to obey him, and we have to make ourselves available to him so that he can have all of us. He doesn't want part, he wants all. Mm -hmm.